after schooling in your primary schooling in England and then finishing your rest of the education for almost more than 17 years in Australia. You came to India just to take experience of the education activity that happens in India. So when did the breakthrough happen that you can come into the system, try to change it and create a niche for yourself? How did it happen? Uh, the breakthrough actually happened watching my young brother um, sit on the toilet seat with uh, cricket cards. Um, he'd fail maths in school all the time, but when it came to his cricket cards, he could run commentary that had so much of maths involved that would it was mind-boggling. So I think my con concept of how kids should be educated came from that personal experience. I was sent here because I had an Australian boyfriend that my parents didn't want me to marry. And uh, so when I was here for one year, um, I was teaching at a very prestigious school in Juhu. And 55 kids in a class and content that was completely from, a, from just the previous year's notebooks. And just very, very disengaged kids. So I saw a huge opportunity to come back and, and impact how education was perceived. Friends, she began in 1993. We need to understand what is scalability from her. She is in almost every city of the country. Apart from India, she is in Dubai, she is in Qatar, she is in Maldives. She runs more than 100 schools. So how did you envision this kind of scalability in hardly a span of 23 years? Uh, no, I made no fancy business plan. It's like I tell any kid who's got a dream or a vision of what he wants to do when he comes to me, just start. So I started with 10 kids. I started with uh, 600 square feet of space. I just started. I think when the intention is correct and your purpose is aligned with who you are, the journey kind of just takes off. So we've got to where we've got to, not because I, I'm a brilliant businesswoman or anything else. I think just driven by the sense of the purpose of what um, I was doing and really believe in. Well, that's what people say when their bank accounts are full, scalability is tall, there are more than 1200 people working for you. <laughs> <laughs> they say I'm not a great businesswoman, so that's what she's doing. So I think that's a sign of a great personality. Uh, we are not going to talk about our bank accounts though. No, no, but what, what, what the initial growth, if you understand, all the initial growth came from parents. So the first franchise that ever got set up was in Juhu, was by a parent whose kid was in my Bandra school. Delhi, kid, uh, the kid was in the Worli school. Hyderabad got set up because the kid was in the Delhi school. So it was more of a journey where people, where you could, you know, from a uh, story point of view, the story was so strong that parents really believed in the story, they saw the outcome and they wanted to be part of that story. How could you absorb such kind of geographic expansion in a country where every state or every city has a different culture, different rules and regulations, different mindset of people, how could you expand so quickly across the uh, country like India? You want an honest answer? A very honest one. McDonald's. So I went, I woke up early one morning, so that's when I tell kids that the, the best time to get ideas is when you're just waking up, when your brain is in that um, um, beta state where it's not like really, really actively working. And I woke up one morning thinking, if McDonald's can do it and create scale with Every burger is tasting the same. I mean, obviously, kids are very different. So it's, it's, but can I create sufficient back end to provide the American School of Bombay because I was the only international school at the time to provide the in, uh, bo uh, sorry American School of Bombay experience at Indian prices? So I looked at what was expensive in the American School of Bombay. It was the teachers, you know, uh, getting um, American teachers to teach here. Uh, the, the cost of stay, um, their salaries. And I said, if I create a team of people who can write the processes at the back, so that's all it is, it's the systems and process. Only difference is it's academic systems and process. Lena, that's fine. McDonald takes only two crores to establish. A school starts at 20 crores. So how can you expand 100 places because I tell good in 23 years? Because I tell very good stories. I thought it was only for the children. You tell that to the parents also to become No, I tell, in, I tell investors very good stories as well. <laughs> so the route to growth at an initial stage was definitely investors on board as well. 
um investors and the franchising model investors in individual schools yes because it's a franchise model um largely uh, later on yes we got some investors in in fact uh, somebody said they're from wellinkers uday salung salunke salunke owns half a percent of my company um the mankekers um uh partly my investors so yeah kishor biani kishor biani is an investor but very i mean i took very small investments and in fact i'm going on a rampage to buy everyone out because i want to stay stay aligned to my purpose so you had a plan in place you might not have realized that but subsequently when you fall back and look at the last 23 years unknowingly an automatic plan was getting created where you got investors on board you spanned the whole country you interacted with parents they motivated you to start more schools how different are you as a business leader compared to the other leaders in the similar industry because i'm sure this success cannot happen without effective leadership so again i go back to what i tell kids if honestly and and i and i, I may sound like a broken record but if you re- your purpose is really strong um and the reason why i tell investors um that i want to buy you out is because every time you're pressuring me for your purpose which is making money i'm moving away from my purpose which is you know great education so i know and 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 i've seen it again and again and again the minute i stay aligned to my purpose the money just kind of flows because it flows in for expansion etc etc but that is the key um to staying authentic and being very true to what your purpose is if your tr- purpose is to make money no issue go ahead but so i think i was always driven by the purpose and that's a story that everybody wanted to be part of so you created a fantastic system a process a product a concept and money flow just uh, came in that's it and you went on expansion yeah you went on expanding the and i only, i actually only took um, external investment into the business in 2006 when i was drowning when i had to <laughs> but i think that was also ordained uh, by the universe so how did you come over an obstacle because 2006 i remember it was a war it was a war and i think times of india was selling on your news at that period of time uh, you were always on the third page fighting with a very powerful man so how did you overcome that ob- obstacle how did it demotivate you or did it make you made you stronger to move forward in life so i did what i tell kids to do yeah because you can keep on focusing on a problem and an issue and for me um my credibility was more important than my bank balance and it always has been um so every morning seeing your name in the paper that icsc says no to lena asher lena asher this lena asher that was like oh god i want to crawl under a rock and die So I did what I do with kids. What is the worst that can happen to me in this situation? So I own my Pali Hill school property and all. I said the worst thing that can happen to me in this situation is I scale back, I lose everybody else. Um because everything was getting rattled. My franchises were getting rattled everything. I go back to running that one school. I'm still alive. I'm still surviving and I sc- will build my credibility and everything else back from there i think the minute i shifted my thought process to what is the worst that can happen to me in this situation everything else started happening again so what is that one great learning apart from this that every obstacle can be a stepping stone if you see it that way it's what happened to me in 2006 that forced me to build my first own school so in some sense i have to thank so that calamity was actually an opportunity in the waiting for you yeah you know it's 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 just you know there's a the, the saying that i love the most which i keep telling kids about is change the way you look at things and the things you look at change and um you know um people would st- had started all these um, companies creating curriculum uh, poaching my staff poaching my teachers and i said you know what why don't i start a training um 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 we're actually trained teachers and curriculum developers and send them out into the world because at the end of the day if i go back to my original purpose was to change the face of education in india to spread the right sort of thing i'll do it one way or the other when you started the concept of kangaroo kids and uh, billabong high it was a new concept that the city was witnessing i'm talking about mumbai because i saw you here and uh, i'm sure a lot of good teachers left other good schools and joined you because of your aura because of your storytelling to them probably so they left them and they joined you how did you face poaching when lots of international schools started mushrooming across the city and they started poaching your team how did you restrict your team from deserting something on hands which might damage your institution and go to somebody else just because they are paying double so to be honest i have had a lot of churn in those days when suddenly school went from being something that you did as a cause to it being a business so i 
experienced a lot of churn. Uh, I can't compete with uh, the Dhirubhai Ambani school and their pockets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so one is I started my own training arm where I would train teachers and send them out. So now I train teachers and my teachers go and teach in Dhirubhai Ambani. So I've started a, a, another business uh, uh, offshoot. Secondly, I have the power that a, a Dhirubhai Ambani school doesn't have, which is lots of schools. I've got a brand story, which they don't have. They have deeper pockets, but I have a brand story. So you have to focus on what you've got. So if I've got a brand story, then I can build a career story for every teacher. So when a teacher comes in, um, the first thing I would ask her was, where do you see yourself five years from now? So if it's in a curriculum department, then, I, then you start training her in that area. If it's an administration department, you start going down that path. So one of the things is to understand the purpose why people do different jobs. Teaching is the one area in which it's not only driven by money. So someone may get lured initially by twice the salary, but everyone is more there because they want to, make a significant, they want to be significant. They want to feel that they're leaving the world a better place than it is because of themselves. And that's their inner cause. The second thing is, uh, people are status-driven in, in their terms of significance. So if I can build a career story, so the teachers keep portfolios, and within that portfolio is their career path. as to So there's an absolute training schedule as to where I will take them. So you have a team of 100 people in your central office which controls all the 100 schools. What is it that you do to inspire them to your core team? Um, again, it's all about engagement and building stories. So I'm doing something new because I want to engage people before they even join. So if I've got 100 people in my, um, in, in my um, office, if, it's, if they're there for curriculum and, and the majority of my staff are there building the curriculum, um, then they di in, interact directly with me. So at every stage, I am telling them the story. I need to understand, uh, the brain needs to understand why it's doing something across the board, whether it's you're in a classroom or you're in your office, if your brain has a reason why it's doing what it's doing, it engages with it at a much higher level. So then the curriculum people sit individually with me because I actually build the curriculum with them. If it's brand and marketing, I'm saying I'm not, it's not typical brand and marketing. What is the story? How can you help me build this story? How can you, because I don't want to be somebody who puts an ad in the paper saying thousand franchises, the largest franchisee of India, um, you know, uh, that's not in my DNA. So how are you going to build a story for me that can get people aligned and come on board for the right reasons? So for two years I went through a bad time because I had a CEO who was growth driven because the investors had, put, had pegged his everything to the growth of the company. And again, we went haywire because we got all the wrong types of franchises in who were not part of the story. So it was a misfit. It was a misfit. So you had to again do the cleanup. I had job. to clean up and restart again. So this story goes on and it continues. What inspires you as an entrepreneur? Because every day when you wake up, there are two opportunities and four problems to solve. So how do you do it every day? What inspires you? I think one is that I don't do the same job two days in a row. Every day my job's different. Um, so I think that's really exciting because there's no, there's no, f I'm not stagnant. I'm always growing. I think I'm a teacher and because I'm so driven by self-development, um, I'm constantly learning from my kids, from my teachers, from the staff in the office. So I think it's, it's, it's personal development and growth that keeps me on inspired. All the time. Yeah. How well do you understand to read a balance sheet being an entrepreneur? Zero. And again, if you want an honest answer, zero. Uh, is it because the cash flow is more than the operating cost? <laughs> <laughs> and if it, if it isn't, it's not my problem, it's somebody else's problem, right? <laughs> um, so you are more driven with your passion than the numbers which add to your bank accounts all the time, right? Oh, for sure. If, if I could, if the Indian government said to me, tomorrow you have to give all this up and join the Indian government as an assistant to or an advisor to the Minister of Education, etc. I can't be the Minister of Education because I have an Australian passport, unless I'd love to be, and I'm not giving up my Australian passport for anything. But if um, I would give, I would give it up in a heartbeat. I, I want to create the m most impact that I possibly can. That's my journey.